think so. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 memorable Big Bang Theory cameos. I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> Would you like a tissue? Happy birthday, Sherman. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at the most memorable guest stars who have crossed paths with Leonard, Sheldon, and the rest of the gang on the sitcom. Which Big Bang cameo is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Bill Nye Long before the Big Bang Theory was mixing science and comedy, Bill Nye had perfected the formula. Turns out Professor Proton predated the self-proclaimed science guy, at least within this sitcom's universe. When Sheldon's childhood idol seeks out Leonard instead of him for a peer review, he attempts to make them both envious by enlisting another TV scientist. Enter a blindsided Bill Nye, who thought Sheldon wanted him to do a guest lecture. He said I'd be speaking to a class. Well, no, I said you were teaching someone a lesson. Now let's go. <laughs> Despite being more famous, Nye is starstruck to be in the presence of Professor Proton, who doesn't reciprocate with the same enthusiasm. It's too bad Bill didn't stick around to help with the nano vacuum tubes. He does know a thing or two about atmospheric pressure. Number 19, Summer Glau. Is that who I think it is? It can't be. What would Summer Glau be doing riding the train? Uh, maybe John Connor's aboard and she's protecting him from an evil Terminator. <laughs> In addition to the Sarah Connor Chronicles, Summer Glau rose to popularity playing River on the tragically short-lived Firefly. That cult show was notoriously aired out of order, premiering with the second episode, The Train Job. So we guess it's fitting that the gang encounters Glau on a train. With the exception of Sheldon, each guy tries striking up a conversation with her. Raj is the first to muster the courage, stealing Howard's pickup line. It's hot in here, must be summer. <laughs> That's cute. Really? I just made it up. <laughs> Howard gets his chance after Raj realizes he hasn't been drinking his cool juice. While Summer kind of dug Raj, Howard is an easy swipe left. As for Leonard, timing isn't on his side. But we imagine Glau would rather talk to him than hear more about Howard's disturbing dreams. Number 18, Buzz Aldrin. Upon returning from the International Space Station, Howard makes a habit of reminding everyone that he is an astronaut. Howard doesn't realize just how obnoxious he's being until Raj sends him a video of a certain astronaut named Buzz. No, not Lightyear. Are you talking about when he thought he was real? <laughs> no. Despite being one of the first individuals to walk on the moon, Aldrin still finds the time to pass out candy on Halloween. Then again, that's probably because Aldrin will take any opportunity to brag about his space exploits. He does so by using conveniently named treats as a segue. Here you go. It's a Milky Way. The Milky Way's a galaxy in space. We're surprised Aldrin didn't break out a packet of Starburst. As if gloating isn't bad enough, Aldrin makes fun of a kid for being less accomplished than him. Should have gone to Jim Lovell's house. Number 17, Steve Wozniak. Is that Steve Wozniak? I think it is. The great and powerful Woz. <laughs> Considering much of this show's humor revolves around tech, it was only a matter of time until Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak dropped by. The gang encounters the great and powerful Woz at the Cheesecake Factory. Sheldon, who's decided to live his life through a mobile virtual presence device, can't resist saying hello. You're my 15th favorite technological visionary. <laughs> Only 15th? Wozniak is impressed with Sheldon's robot and even offers to sign his 1977 Apple II. You know, if you had it here, I'd autograph it for you. Don't move for 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how the buses are running. <laughs> Sheldon rushes to deliver the computer to his 15th favorite technological visionary, but sadly, trips going down the stairs. I'm coming. What? Ow! Oh! The Apple II breaks and Sheldon hurts his ankle. The cameo may have been brief, but it was unexpected, funny, memorable, and an excuse to hear Soft Kitty. Soft Kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. Closer to the microphone. Number 16, Bob Newhart. Professor Proton, it's an honor to meet you. Uh, just, just call me Arthur. Despite being a TV legend, Bob Newhart had never won an Emmy until he appeared on The Big Bang Theory. 
In 2013, he took home a well-deserved Outstanding Guest Actor Award for his performance as Arthur Jeffries, also known as Professor Proton. Thank you, Sheldon. That, that, that was very nice. Want me to sing it again? No. <laughs> the former host of a science TV show, Arthur is taken aback when Sheldon and Leonard hire him to perform at their apartment. Although he's reluctant, Arthur evolves into something of a father figure for Sheldon. The character might have passed away towards the end of season seven, but he still occasionally appeared in Sheldon's dreams as a Jedi master. Oh, this, this is weird. Most, most of my robes open in, in the back. Arthur offers sage-like advice, which is only made funnier by Newhart's trademark deadpan delivery. Where are you going? I don't know, but hopefully somewhere I can wear pants. <laughs> Number 15, LeVar Burton. Hello, this Star Trek The Next Generation actor has made a few fun cameos over the years. First, when Sheldon invites Burton to a party, he actually shows up. Of course, he immediately leaves upon seeing the state of things. Oh, I don't think so. Thankfully, Burton would later return as a guest on Sheldon's online video series, Fun With Flags, only to be criticized by Amy. This guy is worse than Will Wheaton! <laughs> In season eight, Sheldon invites Burton back, and Burton accepts, albeit with one condition. Thank you, Sheldon. Now remember our deal. You do this, I delete your contact information. <laughs> while... While you watch me do it. <laughs> Sheldon then proceeds to show him his George Washington Carver impersonation, and later asks Burton to dress as a swastika. How do you feel about dressing up like a swastika? <laughs> Between Sheldon and Troy from Community, LeVar should probably stop meeting his biggest fans, however hilarious the results may be. I'm LeVar Burton. Number 14, William Shatner. Hello. It took almost 12 years, but Captain James T. Kirk himself finally made an appearance. He's introduced to Sheldon through a mutual friend, Will Wheaton, who we will discuss in greater detail later. While Sheldon has met no shortage of sci-fi icons over the years, he isn't prepared to make first contact with the captain. Being in Shatner's presence stirs up so many emotions that Sheldon throws up all over him. Meh, at least he didn't break Shatner's tooth. <laughs> Tooth! You broke my tooth! Shatner is just one of Wheaton's famous friends. As the two are part of a Dungeons and Dragons group with Kevin Smith, Joe Manganiello, and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Having two generations of Star Trek actors together is one thing, but the episode went all out with this impressive lineup. Number 13, George Takei. Oh my, can I help? <laughs> Another Star Trek alumnus, George Takei unexpectedly pops up in Howard's fantasy. Although Howard's sexual orientation is briefly questioned, Takei and Katie Sackhoff help him to realize that it's ex-girlfriend Bernadette he truly harbors feelings for. He's leaving because you really want to be with me. After Howard wins Bernie back, Takei and Sackhoff resurface. Sackhoff tells Howard to make the move, but Takei advises him to take things slowly. And despite being interested in men, Takei seemingly knows a thing or two about romancing the ladies. A lady wants to be wooed, courted slowly. How would you know? I read. We gotta say that platonically speaking, Takei and Sackhoff have some serious chemistry. Any chance of them getting their own spinoff? That's a series sure to have audiences saying, oh my. Told you. <laughs> Number 12, Billy Bob Thornton. Most of the familiar faces on this list star as themselves. Like Bob Newhart though, Billy Bob Thornton got to create a wholly original character. Thornton mentioned in an interview that he was a fan of the show, paving the way for a surprise guest spot. Of course, you'd think that a group of fanboys would notice the resemblance between Thornton's character and the NASA guy from Armageddon. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. <laughs> All right. Thornton plays Dr. Oliver Lorbus, an awkward doctor who misreads Penny's flirtations. 
The episode takes some surprisingly dark turns as Lorvis traps the guys in a basement to win over Penny, only to spontaneously fall for Amy and then burn to death. We've seen Thornton play creepy characters before, but Lorvis strikes a unique balance of pathetic, dorky, and strangely sympathetic. Doc, you gotta see what you're doing is, is a little creepy. You sound just like Sigourney Weaver when I followed her into a restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11, Adam West. Batman didn't show for Sheldon's sixth birthday, but the series booked the real deal for episode 200. In one of his final TV appearances, Adam West is hired for Sheldon's big day. As the guys engage in a debate over who the definitive Dark Knight is, West gives his two cents. While he champions Michael Keaton, almost every option is considered. Christian Bale, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, and even Lego Batman. Even my poodle's no belts overrated. <laughs> Wait, where's the Kevin Conroy love? Anyway, in terms of who's the funniest Batman, West puts himself at the top. West also takes pride in knowing that he didn't need any kind of muscle suit. Batman finally came to your party. Happy birthday, Sherman. <laughs> the Batman legend wishes Sherman slash Sheldon a happy birthday, but we wish West could have come back for his bachelor party. Number 10, Will Wheaton. Well, 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 if it isn't Will Wheaton, the Green Goblin to my Spider-Man. Of all the Star Trek actors that have appeared on the show, Will Wheaton has got to be the most memorable. This is largely due to his ongoing rivalry with Sheldon. Wheaton became Sheldon's mortal enemy after he missed a sci-fi convention in 1995. Misa think they're very funny! <laughs> well, Yusa can go think that at the back of the line. Sheldon's hatred for Wheaton only grows stronger after he tricks him into losing a card game. I call my meme on Nana. And she's going to be very happy to hear that my small rock kills your enchanted bunny. Becoming one of the show's funniest recurring antagonists, Wheaton would go on to troll Sheldon for the next couple of years. He finally makes peace, however, by giving him a Wesley Crusher action figure. To Sheldon, sorry this took so long, your friend Will Wheaton. Since then, Wheaton has continued to show his friendly side. Just don't tell him that Star Wars is better than Star Trek. Star Trek stinks! Yeah, live long and suck it! <laughs> Number 9, Katie Sackoff. You're looking lovely as always. Thanks, Howard. Always nice to be part of your masturbatory fantasies. <laughs> Before joining forces with Takei in the aforementioned episode, this Battlestar Galactica actress served as Howard's fantasy. Although for a fantasy, she was pretty effective at shooting him down. Appearing in Howard's bathtub, Sackoff not only acts as a great comedic foil for Howard, but also, despite being make-believe, serves as a real voice of reason. The point is, you've got a wonderful girl in your life and you're ignoring her in order to spend your nights in the bathtub with a mental image and a washcloth. <laughs> she tells the lonely fanboy that he needs to stop dreaming about fictional characters and acknowledge the real girl in his life. As if that's not enough to kill the mood, Mrs. Wallowitz interrupts and causes Katie to disappear. Frack. What are you doing in there? I'm taking a bath. I hope that's all you're doing. We share that tub. <laughs> Number eight, Mark Hamill. Hi. I'm gonna need a minute. No offense to Will Wheaton, but we can't think of a more legendary sci-fi icon than Mark Hamill to officiate Sheldon and Amy's wedding. After finding Hamill's lost dog, Howard books Luke Skywalker himself. And no, the Star Wars actor sadly does not have a dog named Bark Hamill in real life. Still, it's appropriate that Howard is the common link here, as actor Simon Helberg has known Hamill since age nine. He went to school with his son, Nathan Hamill, who designed the awesome t-shirt Mark wears in the episode. What is that symbol anyway? Mickey Mouse with vampire fangs? In any case, the wedding inevitably turns into a Q&A session, but Hamill eventually unites the bride and groom in matrimony. And by the power vested in me, by even you can perform weddings.com, <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Number seven, Leonard Nimoy. Ever since season one, fans have wondered if Leonard Nimoy would beam down for a guest spot. Mr. Spock made his long-awaited appearance during season five, in toy form. Down here, on your desk. 
Spock? I need to speak with you. While only a voiceover cameo, Nimoy is nonetheless cleverly utilized. Besides, Sheldon couldn't get too close to the real Nimoy due to the restraining order. This is going to look great hanging next to my restraining order from Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> a Spock action figure serves as both the devil and angel on Sheldon's shoulders, albeit in his dreams. First, Spock tempts Sheldon to play with his transporter toy. After breaking the vintage collectible, Sheldon swaps it with Leonard's. Small Spock isn't done with Sheldon, though, transporting him to planet Vulcan for a lesson in honesty. Although it's unfortunate that Nimoy never appears on screen, seeing Sheldon talk to a toy is arguably funnier. Number 6. Carrie Fisher Whose house is this? Carrie Fisher. And she's a little crazy, so get ready to run. <laughs> Hitting the town with James Earl Jones, Sheldon arrives at Carrie Fisher's house. Ringing her doorbell, Jones and Sheldon make a run for it. Armed with a bat, Fisher answers the door to find nobody there. It's clearly not the first time he's pulled this routine. It's not funny anymore, James! <laughs> then why am I laughing? <laughs> Now, the idea of Darth Vader ding-dong ditching Princess Leia is downright hilarious. But what makes this moment especially noteworthy, however, is that Fisher and Jones had astonishingly never met before. While they both had key roles in Star Wars, Fisher performed on a set, while Jones recorded all his lines in a sound booth. Leave it to Sheldon to finally bring two sci-fi legends together. As they were approaching each other, Carrie said, Dad! Which was hilarious because Darth is her father in Star Wars. Number 5. Bill Gates In a classic screwball setup, Penny has an opportunity to meet Bill Gates, but can't bring anyone along. After Leonard, Raj, and Howard figure out where Gates is staying, they decide to instigate a chance encounter. This is actually the second time that the teary-eyed Leonard has met the Microsoft co-founder, although it takes Gates a moment to remember him. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> Would you like a tissue? How about a hug? How, how about a tissue? <laughs> Matters get complicated, however, after Penny tells Leonard that he can meet Gates, forcing him to play sick. This ruse blows up in Leonard's face when he winds up on a video call with Penny and Gates. Wait, I know you. No, you don't. <laughs> Leonard winds up owing apologies to both Penny and Sheldon, having given the latter the wrong address. He also probably owes Bill Gates a new tie. Number 4. Elon Musk Being an aerospace engineer and a former astronaut, Howard has always looked up to Elon Musk. You gotta be kidding me. Sorry? You're Elon Musk. I am? <laughs> he likely didn't picture their first meeting in a soup kitchen doing dishes, however. Then again, the SpaceX founder is an eccentric fellow. Volunteering on Thanksgiving, Musk turns out to be a humble person. Although Howard fakes his charitable nature, the two do form a bond over space travel and pumpkin pie that somebody else already nibbled on. Honestly, we could imagine the real Elon Musk doing all of this. We don't know if Elon ever got back to Howard about going to Mars, but he should at least bring Sheldon aboard. He has been stealing notes from young Sheldon's old notebook, after all. Elon, the CNN reporter's here to talk to you. Hang on. Send him in. Number 3. Stan Lee This is Stan Lee's front door. Anyone who's seen a Marvel movie knows that Stan Lee was no stranger to epic cameos. There's only one word to describe his cameo on The Big Bang Theory, however, and that's Excelsior. To my friend Leonard from Stan Lee, Excelsior. <laughs> Sheldon isn't at all pleased when he misses an opportunity to meet Stan the Man. So, with some help from Penny, Sheldon finds Lee's house. Answering the door in a Fantastic Four bathrobe, the comic book legend feels understandably that his personal space has been invaded. And you thought you'd just come over to my house uninvited? You said we were invited. Oh, no, no, I said I'm inviting you to come with me to Stan Lee's house. <laughs> Beyond irritated, Lee sarcastically invites them to come inside. And Sheldon, as oblivious to social cues as ever, accepts. Instead of an autograph, he goes home with a restraining order, which is pretty cool too. I saw the inside of his house and got an autographed application for a restraining order. <laughs> Sweet. Number 2. James Earl Jones Let me guess. 
You like Star Wars. <laughs> On any given occasion, Sheldon Cooper is easily the most unpredictable person in the room. After crossing paths with James Earl Jones, though, Sheldon suddenly becomes the stable man. I have one thing to say to people like you. I like Star Wars, too! <laughs> At first feigning annoyance, Jones quickly takes a liking to Sheldon, bonding over their mutual love of Star Wars. Jones takes Sheldon to a carnival, a karaoke bar, and a spa. And this is the perfect end to a perfect night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even Sheldon is mystified by Jones' eccentric behavior, and eventually grows weary of the iconic actor's attention. Before seeing this episode, we never would have pegged Jones as a party animal either. But now we'll never look at Darth Vader the same way again. That's for sure. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Charlie Sheen. So is Sheen playing himself, or does this count as a two and a half men crossover? I'm gonna be in People magazine. Yeah, call me when you're on the cover. <laughs> Danica McKellar. Hmm. Maybe they should have enlisted Winnie Cooper for the physics bowl. Hey Raj, where are you from? The mysterious subcontinent of India. Ooh, India. You know India? I saw a Slumdog Millionaire. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Plus, another Bill Nye appearance. Let's see who else needs a deGrasse kicking. <laughs> Bill Nye's science guy. Nathan Fillion. Just a few more cameos until we have Firefly Bingo. Wait, hang on. If you're really Nathan Fillion, what's the line from Firefly about your bonnet? I swear about my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. Mike Massimino. We wonder what this astronaut gives out on Halloween. Fruit Loops, probably. Don't lose your Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Stephen Hawking What does Sheldon Cooper and a black hole have in common? They both suck. <laughs> it is called the Big Bang Theory after all, so it should come as little surprise that for series co-creator Bill Prady, Stephen Hawking was always a dream guest star. In season 5, however, it became a reality when Sheldon got to meet the world's most famous theoretical physicist. Professor Hawking, it's an honor and a privilege to meet you, sir. I know. <laughs> While Hawking is happy to meet Sheldon, he does point out an embarrassing error in his thesis. You made an arithmetic mistake on page 2. It was quite a boner. <laughs> Adopting a hilarious on-screen persona across a few episodes, Hawking proved to be a skilled, albeit kind-hearted troll, feigning having a big ego and mocking Sheldon, but also taking the time to wish him a happy birthday. Turns out he's not only seriously brilliant, but seriously funny, too. Happy birthday, dear Sheldon. Uh, uh, Professor Hawking, if you just give us one second, we'll light the candles and we can all sing together. I was crushing it, but all right. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.